Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating and somewhat controversial topic, ivermectin, a drug you might know as a treatment for parasites, but did you know it's also being explored for its potential as a cancer drug? It's been a hot topic recently with a lot of buzz, hope, and of course, some controversy. So what's the real deal? Let's break it all down. First off, what exactly is ivermectin? Originally developed in the late 1970s, ivermectin is primarily used as an anti-parasitic medication. It's been incredibly effective in treating diseases like river blindness and lymphatic filariasis, which have devastated communities in parts of Africa, Latin America, and Asia. In fact, it's so impactful that the scientists behind its discovery were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2015. For years, it was known mostly in the medical community as a game changer in the fight against parasitic infections. It's safe, inexpensive, and has been distributed widely in mass drug administration programs worldwide. But that's not where its story ends. Recently, researchers have started exploring its potential beyond parasites. There's emerging interest in its use as a treatment for cancer. This shift from a simple anti-parasitic drug to a possible cancer treatment is where things get really interesting, and as you might expect, a bit controversial. So, why are scientists interested in ivermectin as a potential cancer drug? Here's the science. Studies have shown that ivermectin might inhibit the growth of cancer cells in several ways. One of the most intriguing mechanisms is its ability to interfere with cancer cell metabolism. Essentially, ivermectin can starve cancer cells by disrupting their energy production, specifically by inhibiting the enzyme PAC-1, which plays a critical role in cancer cell survival and proliferation. In addition to disrupting energy production, ivermectin has also been found to induce apoptosis, or programmed cell death, in cancer cells. This is particularly important because one of the hallmarks of cancer is its ability to evade normal cell death processes, allowing tumors to grow unchecked. By reactivating these cell death pathways, ivermectin could potentially slow down or even stop the growth of tumors. Research in the lab has shown that ivermectin could be effective against various types of cancer, including breast, ovarian, and colorectal cancers, as well as leukemia. For instance, in breast cancer models, Ivermectin has been observed to enhance the effectiveness of existing chemotherapy drugs, making cancer cells more susceptible to treatment. These findings have spurred a wave of interest among researchers and patients alike, creating a surge of studies exploring these promising avenues. However, it's crucial to note that most of this research is still in the preclinical stage, meaning it's been done in test tubes or animal models. While these early results are promising, we're still waiting on comprehensive clinical trials in humans to see if these effects hold true in real-world scenarios. It's a long road from the lab to the clinic, but the potential is certainly there. So, why is there so much interest in repurposing ivermectin? There are a few key reasons. First, ivermectin is already an FDA-approved drug, which means we know a lot about its safety profile. Unlike new drugs that can take years or even decades to develop and test, repurposing an existing drug can sometimes fast-track the approval process for new uses, especially if early results are promising. This is particularly appealing in the field of oncology, where patients and doctors are often in a race against time. Secondly, ivermectin is cheap and widely available. This makes it an attractive option, especially in parts of the world where access to expensive cancer treatments is limited. If proven effective, it could be a game-changer for global cancer treatment, offering a more affordable option for patients who might otherwise have few choices. Moreover, the global availability of ivermectin could potentially bridge the gap in cancer care between high-income and low-income regions. This aspect alone is driving much of the interest and investment in research, as the implications for global health could be enormous. But here's where we need to be cautious. While the potential is exciting, it's important to remember that the research is still in its early stages. We don't have enough data yet to recommend ivermectin as a standard cancer treatment. Most of the evidence comes from lab studies, and we need rigorous clinical trials to confirm its effectiveness and safety in humans. The buzz around ivermectin has also led to some controversy. 
During the COVID-19 pandemic, it was promoted by some as a miracle cure, despite a lack of solid evidence. This has made some people skeptical of its other potential uses, including in cancer treatment. Misinformation spread rapidly online, leading to confusion and in some cases, inappropriate use of the drug. While it's good to stay hopeful, it's crucial to follow evidence-based medicine. Just because a drug shows promise in a lab doesn't mean it's ready for widespread use. We need to let the science do its job before jumping to conclusions. That means waiting for the results of ongoing clinical trials, which will give us a clearer picture of ivermectin's true potential and its limitations. In fact, major health organizations like the FDA and WHO have issued statements urging caution, reminding the public that while ivermectin is safe for its approved uses, taking it for unproven treatments could be dangerous. It's a reminder that science is a process, and part of that process is ensuring that treatments are safe and effective before they're widely adopted. I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer last year, and alongside my conventional treatment, I began taking ivermectin. I can't say for sure what made the difference, but my doctors were surprised at how well my body responded to the treatment. While it's too early to say if ivermectin was the key factor, it gave me a sense of hope during a very difficult time. After being diagnosed with breast cancer, I read about ivermectin's potential. I discussed it with my oncologist who allowed me to include it as part of a clinical trial. My tumor shrank more than expected, but I know this is just one case. It's exciting, but I'm aware that we need more research. I've seen a few cases where patients on ivermectin seemed to respond better than expected. But without large-scale studies, we have to be careful about drawing conclusions. It's encouraging, but we're still very much in the discovery phase. Ivermectin gave me hope when I felt like I had none. While I'm thankful for the progress I've seen, I also understand the importance of the ongoing trials. I'm cautiously optimistic and hope that the science can back up what I've experienced. And here's another one. A patient with ovarian cancer who saw positive results with ivermectin added to her treatment plan. She's now advocating for more research so others can benefit from the findings. Stories like these are powerful, but they also highlight the need for more comprehensive studies. Before we wrap up, it's important to emphasize this. The information shared in this video is for educational purposes only. This video should not be taken as medical advice. If you or someone you know is battling cancer, always consult with a healthcare professional before considering any new treatment options. Remember, while the research on ivermectin is promising, it's still in its early stages and more studies are needed. Consult your healthcare provider. So, what do you think about ivermectin's potential as a cancer drug? It's certainly a topic that's generating a lot of interest and debate. Are you hopeful about the research, or do you think it's too soon to tell? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I've got more health-related content coming your way, so make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for more.